Uh, I'm glad you came back for part two. All right. So did anyone think of any questions that you wanted to ask me before I move on to the QuickBooks assignment for this chapter? Okay. Well, if you think of any, put them in the chat. So uh, I've shared my screen and I'm on our Blackboard page. And uh, if you scroll down to chapter seven, the very bottom is QuickBooks three. Now the document you need is in the assignment. So you have to click on it and then click start attempt one. And in there, you'll find the assignment. There it is. And get the instructions. And then um, when you are done with the instructions, you print three reports, paste them all down here in the submission box, and then click submit. You have unlimited attempts, so you can submit it multiple times. And uh, there's no penalty for submitting it multiple times um, or even submitting it a little bit late. I'm not going to take points off as long as I get it before the midterm. Uh, the midterm will be in the classroom, so you'll have to come on campus to room 224 in person to do the midterm. And it will not cover chapter eight. It'll only be chapters one through one, two, or I'm sorry, one, four, five, six, and seven. We're not going to actually have a test on chapter eight at all. It won't be on the final either. All right, so if you grab this PDF in the uh, PDF for QuickBooks 3, then open it. This is what you should see. So I drew the process specifically for this assignment and put the labels uh, the, of the events that QuickBooks uses. So when we're gonna do a sale in QuickBooks, we get the customer's order and then we decide how they're paying. Are they gonna pay in cash or on account? If they pay in cash, then we use a sales receipt form. And that may and that would be in the sale. It's called a sales receipt. Um, it should be called something else. It should be called like cash sale or something, but it's not. It's called a sales receipt. If it's on account, then we create an invoice. And then in order to pay the invoice, we have to then also create a customer payment and receive a customer payment. Once we have all the invoice, all the customer payments received and applied to invoices and all the sales receipts recorded, then we have to make a bank deposit and reconcile the bank account. So the bank account reconciliation, we're, um, we're going to maybe do that. We might not, we might run out of time, so we won't be able to do bank reconciliations because those would come after you've done all of the sales for chapter seven and the expenses in chapter eight. Um, and it's pretty tricky because you have to have everything entered exactly right or you won't be able to do the bank reconciliations. So that's how the process of selling works in QuickBooks. This is the UML diagram for the sales in QuickBooks. So we've got these events, sales receipt or refund receipt. And, in, and that's if you're doing the opposite of a sale, a cash sale, like a cash refund. And then we've got our invoice event or a credit memo would be the opposite of an invoice. It's a, like a customer um, credit on their account. Those two events, then we've got the customer payment event and the bank deposit event. And then all this other stuff are um, types or classification tables and resource tables and agent tables. So the customer list is an agent table. Uh, the vendor list, I don't know why it's not hooked to anything, I guess. Oh, vendors, right. They're not hooked to anything because this is the sales, of course. So the vendor list isn't hooked in here. It will be hooked into the um, uh, the expense uh, model. So we've got the customers and we've got the products. We entered all the products last time. That was at the second part of the setup. And then we've got the charts of accounts, the sales tax, the classes, the locations. We entered all that stuff too. So today we're going to start doing these events, these four events in QuickBooks. 
And I put in here just kind of a kind of a heads up on what kind of journal entries are created by these different transactions or events. So sales receipt and the money goes in your payments to deposit, increases your revenue, increases your cost of goods sold, decreases inventory. Invoice does the same thing, but it's a payment on account instead of a payment to deposit and sale on account, I'm sorry, instead of a cash sale, which goes into your undeposited funds account. Receiving payments will reduce your accounts receivable and the money goes into your payments that need to be deposited account. We call it undeposited funds or it might be called payments to deposit on yours. Bank deposits, uh, your money actually goes up in your cash account, your bank cash account. And then refund receipts are the opposite of cash sale and credit memo is the opposite of an invoice. All right, so it's difficult for me to show you how to do this without actually doing it. Um, so I am actually going to just let you guys work on this. I went through and did all the steps in this assignment. I fixed up the instructions. I made sure that the, um, screenshots are right. They all match what they should be. I circled some things. Uh, to make sure that you know how to do different things. Let me show you how to enter a sales receipt. And you know what? You can actually skip step one and step two if you want. You don't have to do them. It In step one, you make a customer and then you just merge it with another customer. So if you want to skip step one and two, you can. And just go to step three. So what we're going to do is do... This first transaction is a sales receipt, which is a cash sale. So let me go into my QuickBooks. Oh, I got signed out. One thing before I do this, I wanted to show you guys is your chart of accounts. Um, in your chart of accounts, what I want you to do if you can is to click on the settings, this lower one, and go to this option and click 300 and compact. What that will do is it'll make it so that you can see all of your accounts when you scroll. So that you don't have to go to the next page when you get to the bottom. And then when you send me your report, what I want to see is I want to be able to see your account numbers. So you go into the report for the chart of accounts, do an account list. And if you just send me this and I can't see the account numbers on there, then um, I'll just tell you, you need to redo the, the report. If you switch to classic view, then you can almost always see the numbers on there. The other view doesn't always show them. Um, and what I wanna see is something like this. See how there's just like two accounts there with no number, it's fine. There's three there and one here. So some of you have been turning in these these report with like, after I get to the 69999 account, there's like 50 more accounts underneath with no account numbers. And all those need to be inactivated. So um, I wanna be able to see your account numbers and I only want there to be like maybe five or 10 that don't have account numbers. Um, 
I want everything else to be inactivated. Okay, so let's do a sales receipt. So you go to new and sales receipt. When you go into the sales receipt, it's gonna open it in a different view. How can I revert it back to the other view? I thought it was giving me an option. I'm gonna open one of your accounts. Charles, is it okay if I open your company file? Uh, I have my Zoom on a different computer than what I have it on. Um, That's okay. Can I? No, I right can now. open it on my computer. Is that okay with you? I just want no. To yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. Okay. All right. So, um, because I, because mine, it's already. I've already changed the setting, so it's not popping up with this option for me. Okay. So in Charles' company, when we go to new. and sales receipt. Oh, yours is in the new view too. All right, so it might come up in this like new modern view, okay? And if it does, I put the instruction to go to Where did I put it? Oh, I went special in there to say, switch it over to this other view. Ah, oh, darn it. All right. Um, you switch it to old layout. It's what it's called. All right, I can't see it. I thought I had copied it and put it in the instructions. Let me open somebody else's and see if I can find one that has the new layout so I can show you what I mean. Cause it'll mess you up cause you'll be looking for it to look the same as mine and it won't. All right, so this is Christian Montero's file. I'm gonna go to new, let's see if this one will work how I want. It might just be because I already did it. It knows that's what I want and it's gonna keep doing it for me. Yeah. All right, so when this opens, uh, it's gonna have this bar at the top and I want you to click on the thing over here on the right by the help that says old layout. Oh, there it is. It looks like this, old layout right there. Click on that. So you can get it to look like this. This is how the screenshots are and how my computer is. And it's a much better layout just overall. When you don't use the old layout, if you're using the new layout, um, you can't see all the details of the transactions that you're entering. And then I don't know why they even would want it to be that way. So tr please use the classic view for the reports and the old layout for the sales receipts. Okay, so let me go back to the instructions. So this is the first sales receipt that we're gonna make. Uh, this is the uh, online customer that we need to enter this for, and it has dates in. Pay special attention to the dates. Make sure that you use 2022 instead of 2024. Count number and pay attention to the locations. Um, so I went through and I tried to like circle the ones when they change from form to form so that you would notice. Also make sure that you use this account right here, the 12,000 account payments to deposit instead of the cash checking account um, when you enter the transaction. So. I come in here to my sales receipt that I want to do. Kind of lost track of whose file I was in. Oh, okay. Yeah, not that one. All right. So first thing, choose a customer. So I'm going to choose online customers. That's the first thing. Uh, then the date, I need it to be 0102 2022. 
And the sales receipt number is 1001. Location is Tory, and the class is online customers. Now, depending on if you how you did your settings when you set up your company, the class might be up here at the top, or it might be down here below. Both are fine. Uh, if you want, I can and it and it's down here below, and you want to just have one class line. I can show you how to set that. Make sure the deposit too says 12000 payments to deposit. Don't put it in the checking account. All right, and then we're just gonna put in the products. So you type in three protein bowl description and then the quantity. So the quantity is 63. And so if, if your products aren't set up right, then when you start entering these, it's gonna get messed up. So you have to make sure that your products are set up right. And um, most of them looked just fine when I was looking at them. I didn't see any that, uh, that anyone submitted that were a problem, but if there are any, I guess we'll find out pretty quick. Okay, and so then you just go through and add all these. A couple of things, once you get everything entered, Discount percent needs to be two, and it needs to be above the sales tax. You can click those arrows and switch them. Don't do that. Keep It won't be the right amount. So put the discount before the sales tax. And then remember how we added our special sales tax rate? Um, so we, we want to use that instead of this based on location. So go and add the San Diego as the sales tax rate instead of the base on location. Last thing, tip. We said we wanted to accept tips. So in the instructions, it'll show you the tip amount here and it changes on every one. So it's 691.35, so you type that in there. Then you have to click off of it. Then look at your total at the bottom. 2,652.61, and then check your instructions and see if it matches before you click save, <laughs> see if it matches. So here, see it says 5,535.64, that does not match. So don't leave until you make it match. Um, When you're done, you can click this drop down. There's a save and send option that's usually the default. And don't do that because then it'll want you to put in an email and stuff. Don't do that. Just do save and close. Okay. And it won't let me because I already entered this one in my file. So I'm going to just be like, oh, whoops, just kidding. I forgot I already entered it. And then once you enter it, go over to your customers and look at Go to the online customers, that's the one I just entered, click on it, and you should be able to see your sales transactions. So I was able to complete the whole assignment in about an hour. It didn't take me long, but I also have done it a couple times, so I already knew what I was, what I was looking for. Um, once you get the first one done, uh, for the online customers, you can click over here on this drop down and choose duplicate for the next one. And the cool thing about that one, that is that it won't make you type in every line again. Then all you have to do is change the date, the location, the class, and the amount, like the quantities. And instead of having to retype every single line, all the online sales receipts have all the same items and all the restaurant sales receipts have the same items. So you can just keep duplicating the restaurant sales receipts to do all of the entry for all the restaurant sales. And then you can just keep doing duplicate for the online customers sales receipts to enter all the transactions for the online customers. Um, there are, this is how many there are to enter, uh, 20, I think. And after you enter four of them, 
you need to deposit make a deposit so there's one two three four, four okay and then you have to go make a deposit don't skip this so many students i don't know how they they just skip over these deposits so you got to do that check the amount of the deposit before you click save and then do it again don't skip step 16 like you have to do the deposit twice one for the online customers one for the restaurant customers and then you enter four more do two deposits enter four more do two deposits and then at the very end there are a couple of invoices that you do so you do some invoices like catering invoices and then you receive the payments from the customer. They send you a check to pay it. So you receive it and then you deposit it. And then at the very, very end, I printed a list of all the transactions. I told you, go find this transaction list by customer report and um, check and make sure that you have all the same transactions as I do here. And you have to check each one, make sure it's the right amount. And if the dates are wrong, you'll know. And then there's three reports, balance sheet, profit and loss, and sales tax liability. And then, uh, oh, the profit and loss, um, it says with columns displayed by month, but that doesn't matter because it's only one month report. So don't worry about that. So you upload those three reports. And then you're good. That's the end. Um, I, I, you know, going through all the steps, it's pretty repetitive. Uh, so I don't think it would necessarily be beneficial for me to show you. So I'm here to answer questions if you want to, but I don't think I have anything else I need to present to you. I want to make sure that you have time tonight to start working or finish up your QuickBooks from before and start working on this one. Uh, so that you, if you have questions, you have time to ask me before the weekend. Um, and, uh, so they'll have lots of time to help you. Uh, so with that, I'm finished and, uh, I'll let you go and start working on your own. Thank you for coming. I will stay here and answer all the questions you guys, you guys have until, uh, everybody has all their questions answered. Thank you and have a good night.